You are in for a treat today. We have the great Joseph LaRusso. Joe, how are you today, man? Hey, Eric. Good morning. How are you? I am terrific. What are you going to do for us today? So I'm going to paint a glass of wine. I'm going to try to get the essence of that glass and the, the wine that's in there and, you know, try and get the real spirit of that. The spirit of the spirit. Well, you're drinking a little early, I'd say, don't you think? Well, pretty normal for me on a Thursday morning, I guess. <laughs> All right. So we're going to have you right back. Our guest today is Joseph LaRusso. And uh, man, can this guy paint. Uh, he is a legend in the art world. And uh, just known for his incredible portraits and figures. And uh, look at the, the incredible work there. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit about Joe's illustration background. Uh, this is fine art that he's doing, but it it's rooted in illustration. And uh, Joe's going to be part of something big that we're going to tell you about here soon. want to mention to you that we have a prize today for viewing. And that prize is a copy, a subscription to Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine. And um, you will have an opportunity to get either the print or digital edition, your choice. I'm sorry, we're having a little lag there. And uh, so hang tight and we'll tell you how to win that. It's basically from comments and telling us where you're from. All right, here we go. It's Art School Live with Eric Rose. Now, here's your host, Eric Rhodes. Thanks for that intro. I'm Eric Rhodes from Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazines and Streamline Art, and I'm so glad you're here. You know, we started this uh, a week into the pandemic. We did uh, seven days a week for seven solid months, and then uh, we backed off to five days a week for the rest of a year. And then we kind of took a little break. I had some family issues and then we're back. And uh, we try to be back as often as possible. Can't always make it every day, but we try. And the goal here is to keep you inspired, entertained, uh, learning about art. Uh, we have had, I was telling Joseph LaRusso before the program, we have had uh, views in the 150,000 a day range. Uh, we have had people from uh, 150 or 200 countries, a huge audience all around Europe, a huge audience in India, and uh, we're just so grateful that you're here. We want to know where you're from, and we'd like for you to go into the comments. And you don't have to say much of anything; just say hi. But you know, if you say hi from uh, the Hague in the Netherlands or something, wherever you are, we'd love to hear that. And uh, you will have a chance to win a prize when you do that. We're we're uh, we're really having a, a lot of fun doing this. And so uh, we're going to keep continuing it. We have uh, something that I announced uh, this week. Um, it's a little hard to see this if you're looking at it on your phone, but I'm doing a portrait challenge. And the prize, first prize, is a VIP seat with one-year replay to Realism Live, which is our virtual conference next week, starting Beginner's Day starts on Wednesday. Our second prize is a full ticket to Beginner's Day. And our third prize is a Realism Live hat. Yes, you can be walking around with that. And all you have to do is post a portrait that you've done to Instagram or Facebook, uh, Twitter. And you've got to use the hashtag Realism Live Challenge and the hashtag Realism Live. And, uh, and you need to tag me at Eric Rhodes. And you need to get it in by Monday. Now, this doesn't mean you have to paint something new. You can if you wish, but uh, we want you to be painting something that will be uh, representative of, of, of your artwork. So uh, anyway, we would love to have you do that. I put behind me a self-portrait that I did. Uh, if you're here in my studio, I have uh, 26, 28 portraits of me by some of the greatest living artists of our time, uh, three are no longer living. Uh, that would be Timothy Teese, uh, who was the very first one, Nelson Shanks and Daniel Green. But uh, I, I, I have, uh, I've been painted by everybody. It's been really a lot of fun. We do it for the magazine. And, and I painted my self-portrait during COVID and I'll step aside so you can see that. But uh, it's a little dark and not well lit there. But the idea is I wanted everybody doing selfies during COVID so we could have our own models and learn from ourselves. And so that's what we're doing. Anyway, you can paint your selfie or otherwise. 
If you would like, we have a free ebook for you. It's called 10 Steps to Become a High Level Figure or Portrait Artist. We've gone through and we've uh, talked to a lot of different artists and found out the things that are important. And you can get that as our gift to you at realismlive.com slash ebook. All right. And that is terrific. We also would love for you to subscribe to this. And all you have to do is uh, go to YouTube and subscribe and just uh, put in Streamline Art or my name. Or you can just follow me on Instagram and Facebook, uh, Eric Rhodes. We broadcast this live on Facebook and then it usually gets rebroadcast on Instagram because of the tools. Uh, we have a winner yesterday's uh, Value Spec Prize. Uh, winner is Deborah Setzer of White House, Texas. I don't know where White House, Texas is, but I'm sure it has a White House, I'm guessing. So anyway, let's get right to our, our guest now, Joseph LaRusso. Joe, you were telling me before the broadcast uh, that you you uh, kind of started out in a place that ended up uh, making some really great artists. And you, you, of course, are one of them. Tell me about that experience real quickly. Sure, Eric. Yeah. So as we were saying before we went live, um, my um, training was at the American Academy of Art in Chicago back in the 80s. And, um, you know, we were joking that, boy, if you could just roam the halls back then, it was it was pretty humbling and impressive with with some of the artists that uh, today I think are considered, you know, the top in the in the field and some of the best artists and figurative artists around. And so I look back at that time as really kind of a magical time. Um, a lot of them took the fine art route and I wanted to be an illustrator. And a lot of my heroes were not just painters, but also the great illustrators of the golden age. And so it was really, really a, a great curriculum and a, and a great place to be. Well, the great illustrators, uh, uh, just, I, I have, I have my favorites like Dean Cornwall and some of them are, uh, they, you know, there, there was this sense for a long time that illustration was not fine art. And I think we've overcome that thankfully now, but, uh, if you look at, uh, there's a hotel in Orlando, uh, it's called the, I, I'll have to think of it, but it's got a whole floor of Dean Cornwall, uh, and, it's, you know, when I saw those in person, you know, the big paintings that he had done for magazine covers and other things, I mean, that nothing, nothing about that that's not fine. I mean, just really, really terrific. But you've, you transitioned from being a, an illustrator into a fine artist, but your work is very illustrative, is it not? Yeah, you know, just briefly, you know, the whole argument of illustration and fine art, I mean, we could talk about that forever, but I, I really don't see much of a difference. To me, with my work, it's about telling a story. And I think uh, a narrative is so important and, and expressive. And I have a lot of painters and I like to joke with my painter friends who are landscape painters and wildlife painters. And they're just, they're masters at what they do. But I always say, you know what, if you paint a tree incorrectly or something, no one's gonna really know the difference very much. But if I paint an eye or a nose or something wrong, people will tell. That's and, right. and, like, and, li and likewise, following that, I think oftentimes people will resonate most directly to things that they as humans experience, experience themselves, whether they're in a moment of contemplation or interacting in a, in a restaurant or a cafe or in, you know, in a, in a moment of affection or something like that. So to me, it's all about telling a story and conveying that emotion. I think always resonated with me when I look at the sergeants and Soroyas and all of those uh, amazing artists, but also when I look at you know, Cornwell and Howard Pyle and Rockwell and all the stories that they say, you know, I immediately was drawn to that. And so I thought that's kind of what I want to do. Well, and, and every one of them, including yourself, has a, a look. You know, I can I can see any of your paintings and know exactly who painted it. And and I is that something, you, you know, people always ask me the question about, you know, how do you develop your style or your approach? Um, is that something that just kind of comes or is it something that's intentional? No, I, I think it comes from a lot of places. I have a, I think it would be, um, it'd be silly to say that it's completely original and, and, you know, no one else has done it before. I have a lot of, uh, uh influences, uh, you know, great dead guys as we call them. And, 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 uh, and a lot of living artists that I look to and, and, um, you know, you're always drawing, I don't care who you are. I, you're always drawing inspiration from somewhere, whether it's my fellow painters or nature or wherever. I think it's nothing is done in a vacuum. 
And you, uh, you and I were also talking that you, you came out of the, you ended up in the greeting card business and that's why you're in Kansas city. Uh, and, and, and you and a lot of other great artists, uh, came out of, you know, worked at, at the, what was it? Hallmark, I guess. Yeah. So, um, it's interesting because I'm, you know, realism life starts next week. I hope you don't mind me plugging that, but, uh, are you kidding? Uh, <laughs> Well, and I'm really excited to be part of it this year. But what got me excited is that I saw one of my friends and heroes, uh, Thomas Blackshear, is going to be uh, part of the faculty this year. And, you know, boy, talk about somebody who's had a great history and illustration. And, um, you know, back at the Academy, it was there was a history of not just great painters. You know, Richard Schmidt went through there. And but you also had great illustrators. Haddon Sunbloom went through there. And uh, a lot of Gil Elvgren went through there. A lot of these great I mean. You know, you look into the history of illustration, these are giants. And uh, and then Thomas Blackshear. And then uh, when I um, <clears throat> wanted to be an illustrator, after I graduated, um, I got an offer to... Can I tell you a quick story? Real quick story. So yeah. I love telling this story. I got an offer to work um, as a just a board artist doing uh, mock-ups for a, uh, uh, a toy model company in the suburbs of Chicago. And they were going to pay me, you know, a little bit of money and I thought this is great I thought I hit it big this is fantastic because nobody ever really got a job in commercial art as we used to call it right out of art school so I right. got offered that night but in the meantime I had interviewed with Hallmark Cards in Kansas City and about two weeks into that job at the at the I was doing mock-ups and I thought this is awful I didn't go to school for art school to study it to be a classical artist for four years to be doing this and I don't know if it was divine intervention or something, but I got a call in the office. I don't even know how they got that number from Hallmark in Kansas City saying, we'd like to fly you down for an interview. And I thought, this is it. This is the sign. So I flew down, got the job at Hallmark, and I was there for about 10 years as an illustrator, painting greeting cards and different product. And boy, I'll tell you, that was it was like going to grad school. There was so much talent from all over the country because you had all these students that they would kind of... Um, you know, bring in from different art schools. And it was just a great time to grow. And some of my very best friends um, are still, you know, friends to this day that I made those connections with. Great so they, art. Did they just it. have a big giant art studio or was everybody at desks? What, what was that like? That had to, so they, had the time, to, they must have had a hundred artists. Well, that's that's putting it mildly. They had about over 400 artists on did staff really? at one time. Wow. And it was several floors of the sea of cubicles, as we like to call it. But it really was, it was a, there was a camaraderie and a brotherhood. And, and you know, as artists, we have our own little kind of, you know, a world that we live in. And so we gravitated towards to one another. And um, again, it was just, we learned how to, they had workshops. So we could learn how to etch and do glass blowing and do stained glass. And, you know, so many things that I could experiment with that really allowed me to be not just a good painter, but just to expand my creativity and so many other things. It was, it was just a, a great learning experience. And I had the opportunity about midway through my time there to start in with a gallery. And I just thought, well, okay, I'll give that a shot. And that just snowballed and things just took off at that point. And I thought, well, I'm young. Uh, I don't have any real responsibilities at this time. Wasn't married, didn't have a family. So I made the leap into fine art and uh, haven't looked back. It's been, I've been very blessed and very fortunate. So. Yeah, well, we're anxious to see you. Uh, you're going to show us how to paint a, a glass of wine, but also, what are you going to be doing on Realism Live? What What's your plan? So uh, the plan was, um, I basically gave an overview of my process. So um, it's nothing, you know, groundbreaking or, or new in the sense where I've got a three-step process, and I'll talk a little bit about it today a little bit, um, <clears throat> where I do the drawing. And then I'll do a block in with an underpainting, just kind of in a sepia tone. And then once that is dried, I'll do full color on top of that. So, uh, you know, it, it, I'm not an olive prima painter. I will be the first one to say that. It's, it's more of a, a, a process. And that's kind of what I demo uh, in Realism Live. And I kind of go through that. Oh, um, that'll be really exciting to see how you do that. And, and what's your subject matter going to be? Um, it'll be my... At, for Realism Live, it'll be my beautiful model, Rebecca, and I, it'll be taken from a, a painting that I've done before, and I think you'll have the example of that finished piece that I did a while back, and then of the, of the demo taken from that piece to kind of show you kind of what the ultimate product was, but then this new version of it as well. And today, I have a new model that I'm working with, uh, Jennifer, who's just amazing, 
And we'll talk a little bit about that and working from photographs as well as as all of that. So. Oh, good. I, well, I'm excited about it. You know, Realism Live is an opportunity. I mean, to for, for somebody to be able to to watch you paint and to watch Thomas Blackshear and to to watch Graydon Parrish and you know to to hear Jacob Collins and all, just all the variety and all the subject matters, it's going to be a lot of fun. But let's get to our glass painting. I'm um, I, I guess you need to set up your camera. Is that right? Yeah, let me do that. I need to uh, move it to horizontal so we can get a better view of that. So if you give me a second to do that, I'll be ready. Okay. All right. Well, if you just tuned in, our guest is Joseph LaRusso. He's going to teach us how to paint a glass of wine so you can see how to paint glass and liquid and water or whatever. I uh, want to mention to you that we have Realism Live coming up next week. It starts on Wednesday for Beginner's Day. And then three days after that, it's virtual. You can watch it from home. We still have tickets. The price is still the same. We've kept the price low. And I just want to play this for you real quickly. Have you ever wondered how some artists get such realistic quality in their work? You know, unbelievably beautiful portraits, stunning figures, and realistic-looking still lifes or florals? Painting or drawing realism takes your work to a whole new level. Whether you want tight, carefully rendered realistic paintings or looser, more impressionistic realism, most high-level artists will tell you that painting is a skill that anyone can learn. If you follow a process, you can paint beautiful, realistic artwork. But where do you learn? You could spend $3,000 or more to attend a live workshop or convention, or you can learn from the world's finest realists from home for a fraction of the cost. At Realism Live, the world's first virtual online realism conference, you'll get three days of world-class artists demonstrating their techniques and processes. This is a comprehensive conference covering all the subjects you want to learn in portraiture, figures, landscapes, still life, cityscapes, color mixing, and more. Taught by the world's leading artists. Not only will you learn their techniques, you'll have a chance to interact with instructors and get your questions answered. And you'll get to know other artists personally through our breakout sessions. And we'll even paint and draw together at the end of each day. Make new friends in our breakout sessions. Paint with hundreds of others. Get private access to our exclusive members group to become a part of our community. And learn to take your artwork to a higher level. Realism Live is three full days of painting and drawing instruction, November 11th through 13th. And for people who want to learn painting and drawing from scratch, start with our Beginner's Day One Day Atelier on November 10th, where you'll be learning drawing basics, cast drawing, freehand drawing, along with our painting basics. Soon you'll be painting faces, people, flowers, scenery, objects, and other subjects. You'll see your artwork improve faster as you learn from top artists and instructors from all over the world. Hey, this is amazing. This is ridiculous. I set the alarm so I can be here and watch this. This is amazing. I am a long way away, so I appreciate you you holding these live like this. This is amazing. I feel like I've grown and learned a lot. I think my ability to paint increased tenfold after that week. Sign up today and join the world as we learn art together from these amazing artists. Mary White, Kwong Ho, Thomas Blackshear II, Craig Nelson, Teresa Oaxaca, Jesse Lane, Sharon Sprung, Adrienne Stein, Stuart White, Graydon Parrish, Sam Adeque, Andrea Coach, Jeffrey T. Larson, Jacob Collins, Luahana Laconi winner, and many more to be announced. And it's hosted by fine art connoisseur and publisher Eric Rhodes and editor-in-chief Peter Trippi. And if you can't watch live, you can watch replays on your own time for up to a year. And it's 100% guaranteed. If after watching the first day, you don't feel it's right for you, let us know and we will refund 100% of your money. You'll be pleasantly surprised to realize just how much you can learn in such a short time. Realism Live! from the publishers of Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine. Sign up today to reserve your seat now. Okay, we're back and we have Joseph LaRusso and Joseph is now set up and we're gonna get a chance to see him paint. So Joe, take it away, baby. Thanks, Eric. Hey, hopefully you can see me pretty well. I've got the camera pretty close to the uh painting so hopefully I don't 
kind of knock it over, but uh, we'll give this the, uh, the old college try. So <clears throat> I started this painting uh, a day or two ago. It's of my wonderful model, Jennifer, here. And let me just speak quickly, if you don't mind, about the use of photographs um, in painting. Um, I think, you know, we'd like to think that, you know, when I studied at the academy, uh, it was imperative and, and so ingrained in the curriculum there that we drew and painted from the live model every day. And we did that for the first year, for sure. You had to do that for the first year. And some of us just went on to continue to do that all the time. I did it for two years before I went on to advanced courses. So it's imperative, even if you work from photography, that you have to learn how to work from life. I am a stickler when it comes to that. Um, but having said that, the use of photography is just something to be used as a tool. And I think a lot of today's painters um, will do that. And I just think it's, it's necessary. So I do it as well. If you don't know how to paint and draw from life uh, well enough, photography is going to hurt you. If you know how to paint and draw from life well enough, photography can just be used as a good tool. So let me just lay, say that. And if you have anything to add on that, Eric, I'm, I'm more than willing to kind of, uh, um, you know, listen to that. Um, <clears throat> so having said that, though, I've got my photograph here of Jennifer and the glass of wine. I'm using that basically just as kind of my basis, okay? Because obviously <clears throat> the glass of wine is, um, it's, it's, you're not seeing all the subtleties that you would have if you're working from life. Now, for me, that's a good thing because it's editing a lot of things. And I'm just kind of going to use this as kind of my, my uh, base of reference here. And I'm going to need to make up some of it if I have to. And, and fortunately, again, having worked from life enough, you know, you learn skills of observation. <coughs> Excuse me, getting over a bit of a clear. You learn more, uh, your skills of observation are honed and you understand, you know, how things work and form and structure and, and how light will, will work off of the form. And so that comes, again, from experience and working from life. So and it looks like you've got a little bit of a darker red on your brush now. Is that right? And so, again, not to get ahead of myself, but so what I'm doing is I always try to put a little bit of linseed oil or medium in the area that I'm going to be working on that day just to kind of help my edges. Edges are so important. And then I will start on my, my process, as you can see here, is to do kind of an underpainting with just a, like a sepia tone. So I did that uh, in my, my second step. That's been dry. Now, once that's dry, I can work on top of that. Um, and if, if I don't like what I'm doing, I can just wipe the color off, but I haven't lost that underpainting. So for me, it's kind of a fail-safe system in a sense. I hope, hope that makes some sense. But uh, because oftentimes, as you know, you know, you get started on something, and if the drawing's incorrect, and you spend three, four, five hours drawing and painting, and then it's, it's incorrect, and then you have to go back and wipe it all down and start from scratch. Um, so that's kind of what I'm at. So now I'm putting in just a little bit of a, a little transparent, maybe a alizarin crimson and a little bit of transparent yellow green, the colors that are mainstays on my on my palette. And I'm just kind of putting a bit of a, a background that I'm going to work into here in the next step. So let me let me stop yammering here and, and get uh, get to maybe putting some color down real quick. Yammering is perfectly acceptable, Joseph. <laughs> Eric, I've got a good friend who's recently passed, the great illustrator, Mark English, who's a good, who was Thomas's uh, mentor, uh, and you know, I'm sure you could talk to Thomas about that, but Mark lived in Kansas City, and, and he was a great storied illustrator, and uh, uh, Illustrators Hall of Fame, and Society of Illustrators, and all that, and Mark used to joke, he would say, it seems that I spend the first four hours painting, and the, and the next 10 hours fixing my mistakes, so that's, <laughs> that's kind of something that you want to it's it's inevitable that's something you want to keep in mind so for me well, that richard richard schmidt told me the same thing that he said he used to spend all of his time correcting his mistakes and so he he slowed down in the beginning uh and was very very deliberate and as a result he uh, you know he'd lay down a brush stroke stroke and tell himself i'm never changing it yeah and that really made a difference he said i agree and that takes a lot of discipline i i, I have to hand it to them. So I'm going to start now. I put in that, that transparent kind of underpainting a little bit of a wash there and my drawing is still there. I know kind of things are mapped out. So I'm going to go in and start just looking at where shapes are, you know, speaking of Richard Schmidt, one of the things that I tell my students that Richard said once when he would come and demo at the Academy, he would say, and I love this statement because it's so loaded. He would say sound painting 
is nothing more than accurately placing shapes of color next to each other. Now think of that sentence, Eric. Just think of how loaded that sentence is. I mean, it sounds so simple, but it's not. And uh, I tell my students that because that's really what it comes down to. Now, I, accurately placing shapes of color means you need a lot of uh, drawing skill and, and knowing, understanding value and all that stuff. But if you want to break it down into one sentence, as, as the great Richard Schmidt was able to do, that's really kind of how, you, how he broke it down, which I thought was genius. So, I, I think I'm going to have to add you to my wall of portraits, Joseph. <laughs> I'd be happy to paint you. I think you'd be a lot of fun. It would be fun. I'm trying to get some, you know, all the portraits I have are very different, but they're all just kind of head and shoulders. And uh, I think I think I need to start brightening, you know, put some costumes on and get crazy, <laughs> have some fun. I'll so, have to dye my hair red for you. Uh, there you go. So real quick on this. So yesterday I was working on the face and the hands. <clears throat> and normally uh, I wanted to stop there for today's demo specifically for the class. But normally I would just continue blending, uh, working from this hand into the glass. In other words, I'm not really thinking of it as a hand, as a glass, as a shoulder, as a chin. To me, as what I said about what Richard's statement, it's all just shapes of colors. And it's almost like putting puzzle pieces together. And I'm not, you know, one of the biggest hurdles for me, and I hope you don't find me going off on tangents here, but as, as I developed as an artist and as a student, one of my biggest hurdles was to not overthink things, was to, uh, in a sense, take my brain out of the equation because I would tend to think that's a glass. Glass is, my brain tells me that glass is this. And so I would paint that, what my brain was saying, as opposed to trusting my eyes. Does that make sense? Yep. And so I, it took me a long time to figure that out. But um, hopefully I'm getting better. I'm getting closer. <laughs> so I'm putting in some background here. And again, the fun thing about this is if I don't like where it's headed, I'm just going to wipe this thing off and I can start it again. I haven't lost that under underpainting at all. Put some darks in. You want to establish lights and darks, obviously, right? And, you know, you're working from smaller shapes. Uh, I'm sorry, you're working from bigger shapes to smaller shapes. So we're, we're going to just kind of block in the biggest shapes here and then start whittling it down to smaller and smaller shapes. And then same thing with value. To me, um, and I'll get a, a lot of flack for saying this, but to me, I am not a colorist. You know, I always say, look, if you want color, there's a lot of great artists that do color really well. I consider myself <clears throat> more of a tonalist. So it's more about value. To me, always trumps color. And I have artists that we get into heated debates about, well, is, value is color and color is value and they're interchangeable. And I suppose, yeah, we can get into long discussions about that, but um, I'm not really concerned. To me, color becomes, um, I don't want to say arbitrary, uh, but if the values are correct, then I think you can take liberties with color and it could still work. <clears throat> quick rinse of the brush here. Let me get some more paint. What do you clean your brushes with? Um, I, um, can I make, can I plug a product here or is that? Uh, I have no problem with that. We want to help everybody. Um, I like the gambling product. So I've been using uh, Gamsol uh, quite a bit. So, and I have no financial relationship with gambling. <laughs> I just like their products. They're, you know, we all have they're our favorite things. They're good people. They care deeply. They are. As a matter of fact, I was just talking to another artist yesterday about some issues I'm having with, with my varnishing. And I said, you know, I might give gambling a call and see what their, what their recommendation is for that. So. Oh, all of a sudden it became look started looking like a glass with wine right. in it. Right. So 
yeah, at, at, at some point you're kind of like, well, I don't know if this is working out. And then I always tell myself, just, just wait, Joe, just, just trust yourself, you know, st stick with your conviction and it should hopefully come together. And, and, you know, eight times out of 10, it does. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the, we were talking about Richard Schmidt. One of the, the great moments in my life was, uh, I was on the phone with Richard one day and, and I said, Richard, you know, it seems like you never make any mistakes. He says, no, you, you ne just never see them. Yeah. He said, you know, we all make them. He said, the goal is to make fewer. He said, but, uh, uh, you know, we, we, I have a lot of turkeys, a lot of dogs that I've not, that I've not finished or that I've had to fix. And that somehow that made me feel better. Oh, for sure. I think when you, you have somebody in Richard's caliber who, you know, that they're not <clears throat> Superman and they also, uh, you know, make mistakes as well. I'll, I'll tell you a really quick story. If you don't mind, I was, there was a Sergeant <clears throat> retrospective in Kansas city. Oh, it wasn't a retrospective. It was, the, um, they were showcasing his Venetian paintings mm. and, you know, some of my favorites, the, Vene the glass beaters and, and, you know, those, that series. And, um, and I went there and I saw one that he did. And I was like, I looked at one of the hands and I stepped back and I thought, that's just a jumbled mess. I don't, I don't know what that is, you know? And I even went so far as to take a picture of it and I sent it to a, a painter friend and I said, and I zoomed in and I said, what is that? And he said, I don't know, what is it? And then I sent him one zoomed out and I said, it's her hand. And he said, oh my God, that's awful. <laughs> and I said, yeah, it might be awful, but here's the thing. Even his mistakes are convincing. You see what I mean? So to me, that's the job where even you're, you're proficient enough that even when you're, I don't want to use the word fudging it, but even when you're kind of taking liberties, you do it convincingly enough that it, it still works with the rest of the painting. Well, and this is one of the things that, that really differentiates the, the, uh, I, I started to say the men from the boys, but that wouldn't be the appropriate thing to say anymore. The, the, uh, the pros or the accomplished artists from the lesser accomplished artists is, uh, you know, a very big part of painting is, is knowing what to leave out and what to, you know, sometimes you just need to indicate, you don't need to yes. illustrate. And I'm so glad you said that because <clears throat> in a way that's what this demo is about. You know, one of the things that I talk about in when I teach workshops and, <clears throat> and things like that is the um, the importance of editing. And, you know, you look at Sargent and those great painters and they were masters of editing. You look at Zorn and, you know, one of the painters that I really started to enjoy and get into a lot more, and I didn't for a long time, but I really like his work now is uh, George Bellows. And uh, George Bellows, um, I you know, not not my favorite draftsman in a sense, but when it came to painting, he painted so intuitively and took so many, it was so able to edit down to the essence of things um, that I just think it was just genius. And so to your point, knowing what to leave out is so important. You know, the human brain is interesting and you'll learn this about me. I can start again, yammering about this forever. I, I just enjoy talking about this thing so much. The human brain is interesting because if you give it an, just enough information it will take over and fill in the blank. Does that make sense? Yeah. And and that's exactly kind of what you're doing with editing. You're just kind of um, just giving the viewer enough. And for me, with my work, that's the fun of it. Because if I spell everything out, it's, I don't want to say it's boring, but it just kind of leaves nothing to the imagination. And when you leave things unfinished or leave things in a suggestive manner, uh, the viewer becomes more of a participant and they love that. They really enjoy filling in the blanks. <clears throat> you know, I'll get people at my openings who come to me and say, you know, what's the story here? And I'll say, well, I don't know, you tell me what the story is. And, that, and they'll go on for an hour telling me what they think it's about. And that, I get a big smile on my face because again, it tells me they're completing the process for me. Now it, to them, this now has become, um, I don't say what's the word I'm looking for, not user friendly, but it has become participatory. You know, they are now part of, part of this process. And uh, I love that. I really love that. So now it looks like you're putting some of the background into the glass, but it's, it looks like it might be toned down a little bit. Yeah. So I'm always working. Um, 
I'll lay in a dark and a light, but then I tend to work from the center out. So I tend to um, put in kind of my middle tones and then I'll start building up from there. Um, so I, you're right. I, I put in some of that background um, and again, looking for shapes as best as I can, maybe even having to make up a shape or two if I can do so convincingly. And oftentimes when you look at something like glass or metal or reflective surfaces, you know, it really doesn't take much to give, again, give the viewer the illusion of what it is. And they tend to kind of take over and say, yeah, that's a glass because I've seen enough glasses to know that that's kind of what they do, you know? And so you don't have to spell everything out. <clears throat> again, filling in some puzzle pieces here, trying to find a, a bit more um, some more shapes and values that I can kind of fill in. So if somebody doesn't have the, uh, the gift or opportunity to go to an art school, uh, what's your best advice for them in terms of learning to draw? So I've got to tell you, <clears throat> um, I think there are so many great opportunities now with the internet and uh, workshop based uh, curriculums that I think any student has the opportunity look if you want an art degree if you want an mfa because you're going to go teach someplace that's one thing but if you just want to learn how to be a great painter or a great draftsman or something there's a lot of opportunities i think um through workshops or uh, online uh, zoom based uh, you know uh, opportunities that i think you just have to look for them and they're there well realism live certainly falls into that category doesn't it you know, it does. And I have to say, um, you know, I think you and I met for the first time at um, FACE uh, the first year mm -hmm. down in uh, Miami. And that was such a fun event. Um, and uh, when I was asked to do Realism Live, I saw the lineup that you had. And I thought, holy smokes, this is formidable. This is impressive. And I was really excited to be asked to be part of it. So thanks for doing that. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to do it again as soon as uh, we're allowed. I mean, we were going to try and do it this year, but we had to cancel again. We even got sued by the hotel uh, because we canceled and had a financial obligation and we ended up having to write a really big check for canceling. Uh, so you mean COVID? Wouldn't, they wouldn't let you get by with, with the whole COVID thing, huh? No, because the, technically they were, um, they, the problem was that they said you can hold the event. They said, the, but you can't have as many people. And we said, well, we can't, we can't pay our bills if we don't have enough people. And they said, sorry, you have a contract. And so Jeez. we, uh, we wrote a, a, a very painful check because um, we didn't want to go through a lawsuit. I mean, they, they, they started out suing us and then we settled it, but, and they're nice people. They just were doing what they had to do. But right. um, Anyway, so we'll, we couldn't hold it this year and uh, we'll hold it again in the future. That's why we're doing Realism Live again. No, I think we'll keep doing it because we have so many people around the world who can't travel or people who are locked at home for whatever reason, you know, family members that they have to take care of or kids or aging spouses and, uh, or, and sometimes it's just about the money. They can't, you know, spend the money on an airplane and a rental car in a hotel room to get there. Yeah, you and I were talking a little bit <clears throat> before the broadcast here today <clears throat> about that. And I, and I thought, you know, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a natural fit just because of that, what you just said. You have people that can't make it to the States or wherever. And because of the internet, you just, you're not limited. So to me, it's, it just seems like it's um, need, I think would be there and you have the technical uh, ability to do it. So for sure. I, Totally well, and it's getting it's getting harder and harder to pull pull these things together uh, because people are starting to get busier again. So you know, I think this is a real important one to go to. Where will the next one be? Do you have any idea? Uh, no, I don't have any idea. That's you know, we typically have time and ability to travel so that we can go check out facilities, and uh, we've not really been able to do that so much this year. So we're just kind of talking about it we we will probably uh have it in october of next year okay. uh but we don't or i mean november uh but we don't know what we've been talking about a little bit about going going back to miami but um i don't know we'll just we're gonna start looking at facilities and see what we can find 
So uh, that's, that's the be- other hard part. You know, you have to find <laughs> facilities that are affordable. Right. And you'll be doing plein air. Is that is that a go? Plein air convention is going to take place in Santa Fe this coming spring, and I, I it was sold out or very close to sold out before we had to cancel. So we're already halfway there. I I think it'll sell out very very quickly. So, but it's going to be a great fun. It just tells you that people are just the need to do that is just is totally there. I think you know. Well, it's like Thanksgiving for artists. You know, it's it's like you know, your family, these are people that you get to know at these events and you come back every year so you can see them and paint with them and hang out and watch the best people teach. Sure. It's a lot of fun. Okay. So you see kind of where I'm headed with the glass <clears throat> now. Um, <clears throat> I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me for clearing my throat. I'm going <clears> to, <throat> if you don't mind, I'm going to continue on a little bit longer with this just because I think I'm really getting close. And again, I'm just trying to get as enough information to, to give the viewer that that leaping off point. I'm not gonna go into the minutia of, of laying out every subtle reflection that I see. And you know, that's not necessary. But uh, let me get a little bit further along. I'm having starting to have a lot of fun with this now. Uh, and then I'm gonna move down to the stem. Let me work on that on that. Now my temptation my temptation would be to put those reflections a lot brighter. Uh, but then you don't really want to draw the eye to that glass, do you? Exactly. You don't want to do that, and all you don't want it to compete with with with. To me, this is the payoff. The face and hands are always the payoff because I tell my students, <clears throat> I don't care how great the periphery is done, if the if the center of interest and the focal point is is horribly painted, it doesn't matter. It, you know. So um, so that's always the 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 payoff for me. Now, let me move down into. Stem. Same thing, same approach. Things are again. I'm not thinking. Well, that's the stem, and that's the the cup, and that's the finger, and that's to this. To me, again, it's all, you know, as Mr. Schmidt would say, it's all just shapes of color, and I'm just kind of putting those puzzle pieces together. So, <clears throat> how's your traveling? I know you do, do quite a bit of traveling. Are you still on schedule like normal, or is that? COVID changed everything for you? Well, COVID changed everything. You know, uh, Joe, I was traveling 40 weeks a year. Oh, boy. Uh, and I was never home. And, I, and, and of course, that's tough. Um, yeah. So after being stuck at home for as much time as I was, of course, I was doing the broadcast every day. So I actually got busier. But uh, I decided I'm going to cut back on my travel overall. I, uh, I originally, it's like, I want to do more and more and more events because they're a lot of fun, but you know, I was just dragging myself down. And so I'm going to, I'm going to be more judicious about how many events I do and how much I do and try to stay off the airplanes as, and, and not do as much traveling because I want to paint and I want to be home with my family, although the kids are in college and, um, uh, just, uh, you know, I think we all kind of reconnected with ourselves and our families and, uh, and, and our priorities. Eric, I think that's such a, an important point that you just say, and I totally agree with you. You know, I've got a young family and, you know, um, same thing. I, I, and it's unfortunate that we need something like COVID to kind of, you know, wake us up to that sometimes. But again, I talk to my artist friends and I, and I say, you know what, I think being a, a chasing that golden ring, as I like to say, and, and being, you know, a successful artist or successful anything is great, but I don't want to do it at the expense of uh, not having time for the kiddos. You know, I've got two daughters, one's 12 and the other's 10. And these are such important times for them that I just yeah. want to make sure that I'm, that I'm there for them. And, and yeah. my wife has a very active uh, career as well. So, you know, it's, it's all about balance, I guess, in some way, right? Absolutely. <clears throat> okay. You see how that, that stem is kind of starting to, again, same approach, right? I start in with that kind of middle tone and I'm going to kind of, if you want to bear with me here in a second, I'm going to start putting in some of the highlights. Yeah, we've got, we can, we can go another, oh, let's say another 10 minutes. Okay. That should be perfect. <clears throat> Let me, uh, if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and put them in the comments. Let me put in the darks uh, around the stem and start, you'll see that pop a bit more. (laughs) 
I'm excited to log on next week and, and um, see all the other artists and what they offer for Realism Live. I think it's, uh, I'm hoping to learn a few things myself, to be honest with you. Well, you know, if you think about it, I mean, there's over 20, maybe 30 artists, and most of them are world-class artists like you. And, and if you just pick up one thing from each artist, you're going to be, it, it'll blow you away. I agree. And, and the one thing that I've learned in my uh, little bit of time doing all this is that uh, the best artists are always looking for a way to grow, a way to learn something that they hadn't figured out before. Sure. And, um, uh, you know, the other thing that happened to me is um, I at Fall Color Week a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, maybe we did we do portraits at night. You know, we all sit up and we play music and we sing and we we just drink and have fun. And, you know, it's not unruly, but we we just have a good time and and uh, we paint portraits. And so the first night painting a portrait, I just I, it was it was awful. I was embarrassed by it because I hadn't painted a portrait in a year because I normally have a portrait group. And the second one, all of a sudden, all these, I, I started painting it and all these things from Realism Live started popping into my head. When I was painting an eyeball, I remember there was one thing that I remember seeing. And so I did that one thing. And, you know, all of a sudden I was getting compliments on the portrait and it was like, ah, this, it, it's, it, it was came through osmosis. I mean, I, I didn't paint along because I couldn't, cause I'm, you know, hosting the event. And, but just by watching, uh, you know, in between sessions and so on, I picked up a lot of things. So I think that stuff six, st it sticks and it sinks in. And then of course, if you, if you have the time to take notes or to paint along or to, you know, to practice what you've, you've learned, I mean, you're going to get a lot out of it. Don't you find sometimes, and I was just talking to another artist about this a couple of days ago that, you know, when you put that pressure on yourself, I don't, I'm just speaking for myself, I just tend to choke. Whenever I say, go out, this has to be the, the master, this has to be the painting I'll be remembered for, inevitably, it'll just, it becomes a failure. And conversely, when I sit down and I think, I'm just going to have fun today, you know, the heck with it, you know, I'm just going to follow my gut and, and I know, I know my skill, I know what I'm capable of, and I'm just going to follow that and trust it. And I just have fun. And um, boy, those tend to be the, the real gems. Yeah, when you when you start experimenting, just playing. All right, let me get to. Uh, I don't want to labor this. Let me get to some highlights here. Okay, cool. I'm anxious to see that. It's kind of like the secret okay. sauce. It's all about value, right? So I'm just gonna get. I usually work with with filbert brushes, Eric, and then at the very end, <clears throat> I have a. <clears throat> if you can see that, it's just a fine. It's actually a watercolor brush. It's just a fine um, sable that I use for highlights. And I'll come in and... Why a sable for highlights? Just because I want a point. I want something that can keep a point. So it doesn't have to be a sable. It just needs to be something. And I usually find that natural hair brushes are better for this, but just something that can keep a point uh, reliably. Because, you know, usually a lot of synthetic brushes, after a few you beat them to heck they're they're kind of you have to i pitch them just because they're yeah. you, know, you know and i'm i'm notorious for not washing my brushes i tend to use them two or three four times and then they're kind of screaming for mercy and i have to kind of throw them out so here's a question from jay kenneth grody who says how does joseph choose a background this one appears very vibrant right that's a great question so <clears throat> again uh, for me, um, the the focus is her and the glass. That's the story. So the background is arbitrary, and I will just make it up. I'm just going to put some pattern. I'm just going to have some fun, maybe take the palette knife and put some texture back here. Because what I'm trying to do is not to say she's in a cafe or she's in this specific spot. It's just that she's in an environment. She's in an atmosphere. There's space and distance. And that's my concern, not specificity as to where she's not at Applebee's or she's not at, you know, Mickey D's, whatever. <clears throat> she's just someplace you can, you can, she's not just floating in space somewhere. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, there's a question about realism live and they said, is there still time to register? Yes, absolutely. As a matter of fact, there's some free gift bonuses, a couple of videos and in, including uh, Mark Delessio. And then there's a, a special call with Joseph, uh, and you'll get those if you register before Sunday. 
you can register up to the last minute, of course, um, but we'd love for you to get it done. We've got um, many, many hundreds of people that are coming. It's going to be a lot of fun. It sounds like a blast. Yeah. Yeah. We wish you could be here in person, you know, just get on an airplane and come over here and hang out with us during the show. It's so much fun. You know, we go, the crew, we're always cutting up and having fun in the background, you know, when people don't see what we're up to, but uh, it's been hard to have artists in person during COVID, of course. I bet. I bet. You know, you're, <clears throat> remind me, you're in Austin, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Boy, what a great town, huh? Yeah, it's, it's, it'd be great to be here if you're, if you're 30. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that counts me out. Yeah. <laughs> 30 and single. Uh, it, you know, there's something to do every night if you, but you know, we've been raising kids like you. And so we, you know, we don't go out. Yeah. And, uh, but now that the kids are almost completely gone, we have one at home and we have uh, a friend of the kids staying with us, living with us now. So we have two at home. Wow. And so, uh, you know, we don't go out like we should, but we'd like to go out. There's so much live music and and good barbecue, as I understand it. Although I will argue till my dying breath that uh, Kansas City barbecue is the best. Well, let's get the, the chat room going. Uh, let's see. Put your vote in. Is it Kansas City or is it Austin? Well, you know, some barbecue. I as well will probably chime in too, though, right? So Who will? Somebody from the Carolinas. Or Memphis. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, put in where you think you're vet, you're the best bar barbecue is. <laughs> <laughs> do you see how this is coming along a bit i hope you can see this on i really can yeah sure. and so i'm I'm tweaking this and, and even i don't want to say i'm making it up because i've got a lot of information here but i'm you know picking and choosing kind of what i want to make important what i want to you know keep more subtle i'm gonna move back down to this stem because this still needs some work Eric, I'm pretty much at the essence of what I need. Well, you know, it, if, if you ever need, if we need to cut it short or anything, you just let me know because I can keep doing this. <laughs> this is going to be fun now. Uh, well, I think what, why don't you why don't you come back on camera? We have the essence of it, and we'll we'll bring you back on. This was this was a lot of fun. Can I show this real quick? Like, yeah. You see that? Very nice. All right. Okay, well, thank you so much, Joseph. It was a pleasure having you, and we're going to see you uh, doing a full full demo on Realism Live uh, next week. That's going to be exciting, so we'll be talking then. You'll have a chance to interact with the people that are attending and answer their questions as well, so that'll be fun. Thank you for doing this, and, uh, you know, I'm going to come and hang out in Kansas City one of these days because it sounds like there's a, a lot of artists there that I need to meet. There's a great art community here, and you're always welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for doing this, Joseph. Thanks for having me, Eric. Hopefully right. uh, we'll Bye -bye. talk soon. Take care. Well, our guest today was Joseph LaRusso. And if you if you didn't catch the beginning, I'll always go back to the beginning and watch the replays. We'll post them. Uh, he was painting a wine glass today. It was a great opportunity. A reminder to you guys, uh, just a couple of quick things. First off, we have a portrait competition going on right now. And that portrait competition is... Um, you can uh, just put your port post your portrait and put the hashtag in. And let me, I'm just trying to find here for you. Uh, the hashtags are Realism Live Challenge, uh, Realism Live, and then uh, tag Eric Rhodes. And so um, anyway, just go ahead and, and do that and post them on Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. Uh, it can be an old portrait, a self-portrait, a new one, just something that you've done. And you can win, I got to do it before Monday because you can win a VIP seat to Realism Live and a one-year replay. I saw somebody in the comments saying that they had kind of spent their budget, but if you could uh, post this and then win, you might be able to get a free seat. Secondly, we're giving away a Realism Live beginner day ticket and, and third, a Realism Live hat. And I don't even have one of those, by the way. We made them up and, and gave them to our VIP people, but uh, I didn't get one. So um, so make sure you do your portrait. And of course, if you want to register for realism live, we would love to have you. Uh, I probably won't be on next week because well, I'll be on part of the week, but, uh, not during realism live, of course, because I'll be hosting that. 
And uh, Peter Trippi, the editor of Fine Art Connoisseur, will be with me hosting it. So thanks again for tuning in. Uh, we're here for you as much as we possibly can be. You know, things are getting busier again, and it's a little harder to get the time to be here every single day. But we are trying to be here when we can and to highlight some great artists and some great training for you. And so uh, just um, come back, and we would love to uh, be there with you. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher, fine art connoisseur, Plen Air Magazine, and Streamline.art. Thank you for watching, and make sure you go into the comments and tell us where you're from so you can win that prize, which is, what was the prize today? I forgot what the prize was. Uh, <laughs> oh, a subscription to Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine. So make sure you uh, put where you're from and, and try to win that subscription. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.